Check one, two. Check one, two. Check one, two. Well, good morning. It's good to be gathered as God's people for worship on this second Sunday of Easter. Uh, I'll invite you to remain seated for, for the Thanksgiving for baptism. Uh, as we li- uh, move into this series on living the resurrection, uh, we're going to be doing Thanksgiving for baptism instead of confession for forgiveness at the beginning of each worship to remember uh, that not only do we die with Christ in the spiritual life, the Christian life, but we also rise with him to new life. So we'll begin worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Amen. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea, you led your people, Israel, from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life, and above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit. Renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to stand as you're able as we sing our gathering song. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Almighty God, with joy we celebrate our Lord's resurrection. By the grace of Christ among us, enable us to show the power of the resurrection in all that we say and do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails in my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you haven't, you've seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'll invite the kids forward and you can be seated. All right, thanks for coming up, friends. So today, the disciples are experiencing a very negative emotion. They're experiencing fear. Have you, are you guys afraid of anything? What makes you afraid? A bunch of stuff. What kind of things make you scared? Um, when I play fo- if I play football and other people have football cleats, um, I'm scared one of the cleats might hit me. Yeah, you might get hurt in football by a cleat. That's scary. Yeah. What else? You don't want the ball to hit you in the head. Yeah. What else are you scared of? Heights. 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 What if I told you that I have uh, a snake in my pocket? Would that be scary? Ah, oh, oh, didn't get you guys. <laughs> Should have worked on my execution there. Okay, what else are you scared of? Bats. Bats, yeah, bats are scary. You know, I'm actually a little bit scared of heights too. Raise your hand if you're scared of heights. Yeah, I used to have dreams or, or nightmares, really, where I was, felt like I was falling from a height. So do you think we can conquer my fear today? Yeah. Okay. What if I, uh, have you guys ever done a trust fall? Yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to stand up here, and you guys will just catch me. Yeah. Okay? Do you think that will work? Yeah. All right, I'm ready. What? Just these two? Why, why can't you catch me? You're not trying to die? Okay, what if we did someone else? What if we did a smaller person? Okay, and did a trust fall. Okay, so here's how you do the trust fall. We need to learn our directions here. We've had some injuries in the past. So this is how it works. No, no, not yet. You say spotter ready. Try it. Spotter says ready, we'll all say ready. 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 And then you say falling. Fall. Okay, so so try it. Try the try the words again. Ready. 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 Fall. That was hard. We'll try it to somebody else. Okay. Let's have everybody else be seated if they're not up. Okay. Ready. 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 Oh, good job. Okay, you want to try, Madden? Go up. Keep your arms out too. Well, what were the words, remember? <laughs> a lot of trust with this one. <laughs> Spot it ready. Say that. Spot ready. Ready. <laughs> oh, you dropped. Who wants to try? Go ahead. Spot ready. Ready. Oh, scary. Anybody else? Can try it. 
Ready. Oh, good job. One more. Adults, you're next. Get your arms out. Oh, nope. Wait till I say ready. Keep your arms out. Okay. Ready. Good job. Okay. So why was that so hard? You don't know if you can trust them? What else? What's that? Oh, he, he said it. Okay. You don't know. You can't see them, right? Sometimes it's hard to trust something that you can't see. But why did you trust me? A lot of you trusted me. Why? Did, why? why do you think? Oh, yeah, you can't see with the glass. Yep. Because when we said spot ready, you heard us and said ready. Yeah, you listened to my voice. You knew me, right? You know, you know I'm your pastor and I wouldn't hurt you, right? Yeah. Usually, yeah. <laughs> so that's what the gospel lesson is about today, is that sometimes we can't see God, but we listen for God's voice. And when we have a relationship with him, we can trust him. And what else could you see when you, even though you couldn't see me, what's up there? The cross. cross. And that's what our faith is like too. We can always look to the cross and know that Jesus is with us because he suffered for us and he died for us. So there's nothing that we can go through, no fear that we can face, whether it's heights or snakes or sports or darkness, that he won't be with us. Amen? Amen. Okay, let's pray. Repeat after me. Dear Jesus, thank you for going to the cross and rising from the dead. Help us to trust rather than fear that you are always with us. Amen. Okay, you can go back to your seats. All right, thank you kids for doing that exercise with me. So we're picking up on the same theme uh, that we left off on last week in the story of the resurrection at Easter. Jordan's ready to do a trust fall. (laughs) We we uh, we talked about that this this Easter story from Mark, and that it wasn't about glory or, or victory or even the the warm and fuzzies that we talk about with Easter eggs and Easter bunnies, but that the first experience of the disciples of resurrection was one of fear. Living the resurrection involves facing fear. So I shared last week a little bit of my call story about how for up until uh, 2022, most of my life I lived with family and friends in large communities. I grew up in Des Moines, went to college in Sioux Falls, did study abroads and summer jobs anywhere from Vancouver, Washington to San Jose, Costa Rica, worked in Chicago, Minneapolis and St. Paul for seminary, and then I found out for internship that I will be living alone in the great Dawson, Minnesota. And it was something that I, I, I would have never chose for myself and uh, had never imagined or, or gone through, and it was scary. And so I shared about... Uh, how following God's call, trying to to live in this good news of the resurrection, does not keep us or shelter us from fear, but actually that that calls us through our fear, and God actually shows up in the midst of our fear and uncertainty and questions that we might have. It's a lot like the experience that the women at the tomb had in Mark. Mark. The gospel ends with them fleeing in fear and amazement, seizing them, not saying a word to anyone. And yet somehow, this good news of the resurrection of Jesus Christ has reached us 2,000 years later on the other side of the world. God has called 
people through their fear. This week's story of Thomas, infamously known as Doubting Thomas, which we're going to deconstruct in a moment, uh, continues this story of fear. It's As the story goes, the first night of the resurrection, the disciples are in a locked room meeting because they're afraid. Jesus shows up and says, peace be with you. Thomas isn't there, though, and so he says, the only way I'm going to believe that this happened is if I see him, can touch his wounds and put my hand in his side. And a week later, the disciples are again in that room. Thomas is with them. He sees Jesus and believes what I, want, what I want us to notice is that it's a week later and the disciples are still shut behind closed doors. Okay, a week into the, the, this good news of the resurrection, this news that is going to, to change the course of history, a week into that and Jesus' closest friends are still shutting themselves in rooms because they're too afraid about what happens next. Fear seems to grip their hearts. So fear can be paralyzing, this emotion that we experience. There's some uh, goodness in the emotion, the fight or flight response, right? There's some intense moments of fear. If you see a sna- if a snake were to, to scuttle across the room, uh, it's a good fight or flight response to have. But there's this other kind of fear, more of a, a low-burning kind of fear, that leads to this state of inaction that almost feels like a paralysis, like you're stuck in a place. Have you ever been in that kind of fear in your life? Where you feel stuck? Maybe it's uh, the fear of the future. Maybe uh, the fear of not being able to make ends meet. You pay the bills uh, day to day, but you just know that if uh, some disaster were to strike, you might not be able to get by on your own. Or maybe it's the fear of the past. Maybe you've done something in your life and you haven't been able to tell the truth to the ones you love the most about it and so you live a lie. And day after day goes by and it becomes harder and harder to face the truth. You're, you feel stuck. You feel paralyzed. The good news, well, the, the bad news, we might say at first, is that being a good church-going Christian doesn't keep us from some of these hard realities of life. It doesn't keep us from fear, but but on the contrary, God promises to show up in the midst of fear. God promises to show up. That's what Jesus does. He, He comes into this locked room full of fear and says, Peace be with you. Do not doubt, but believe. So that's that's the good news this morning, is that faith is the antidote to fear. Do not doubt. But believe, And I want to break down these words of Jesus because they can be misleading. What I want to say today is that Thomas is not a doubter, but an unbeliever at first. Okay, doubt is not the antithesis of faith. Doubt is not the opposite of faith or, or belief. It's unbelief that's the opposite of belief. It's not believing something that's the opposite of believing something. Doubt, on the other hand, can be helpful to faith. So we're going to look at the, uh, uh, the Greek here for this verse, do not doubt but believe. I've got it nice and color-coded for you. It's a pretty simple translation, actually, uh, pretty straightforward. So the colors match in the English translations here. So me gino apistos ala apistos. The first part me just means it's a negation, so it means do not. And white there, the yellow gino is just the, the form, a verb form of to be. And then uh, that allow in the blue means but. But then you have this, this pistos word in the green. And this is the word that I want to focus on. It's actually an adjective, pistos is, and it means believing or trusting or faithing, faith, faithful. Okay, what I want us to notice is that uh, the word doubt is not in this. It's just a negation. So the red there is the, the prefix ah. Where are my English uh, scholars at? What does it mean to put the letter A in front of a word, the letter A? Just negates it. Right? So the word a, asymmetrical means not symmetrical, or atypical means not typical. So apistos means not pistos, not believing. So what Jesus is really saying is here, do not be unbelieving, 
but believing. And I want to go one step further there on the bottom and, and offer a different translation. This word pistos can mean one of three things. A lot of times it can mean belief, it can mean faith, it can mean trust. They're all synonyms. Some of you are like, we already graduated English in high school. We don't need to, an English lesson here. Stay with me here. This is, this is going to get us to, to where we're going. Uh, but I'm going to go with that third translation of trust because it gets at what faith is. It's a relational thing. It's not an intellectual thing. Do not be distrusting, but trusting. And see, the problem of fear is not an intellectual problem primarily. So I don't like the word belief or unbelieving because when we say a belief, a lot of times we think about it's a set of ideas that we have to intellectually assent to. But that's not what faith is about. It's not just about a set of ideas in our mind. It's about a relationship. Think about uh, a simple example of the snake example, right? You can know intellectually when a snake uh, scuttles across on the floor, you can know that a garter snake is not going to harm you, really. Right? Who knows that? Garter snakes are not poisonous. They're not going to harm you. But that doesn't solve the problem of your fear, right? You want that thing to be gone, and if, if it can't be gone, then you want to throw your friend in front of you so that they take the snake on. In other words, your reaction or, or the way that you get out of that fear is, is have a trusting relationship, someone who can keep you safe from the thing that you're afraid of. We're all just kids at heart. Right? We, we want someone who we can trust to keep us safe. Do not be distrusting, but trusting, Jesus says. Faith is the antidote to fear. When I moved to Dawson and lived alone in a small town for the first time, and faced that fear, it didn't matter that intellectually I knew that this year would pass. And I'd get to move on to the beautiful town of Marshall where there's an Aldi and a brewery. And <laughs> it didn't matter intellectually that, that I, I knew that the year would pass. What got me through that was a relationship with the living God. Right, relationships with, with people and friends that I made there, but more than anything, intellectually on a, on a long, uh, cold night living alone in the winter, it didn't matter that I knew that I would get to their side. What mattered was a relationship with the living God. What got me through was worship and prayer and engaging in this relationship with the God who knows me. God who shows up in the midst of fear and brings you through it. So friends, the invitation for us on the second Sunday of Easter as we learn to live in the resurrection is, is what Jesus says to Thomas, to a, to a man full of fear. Do not be distrusting, but trusting. The God made known in Jesus Christ promises not to keep you from fear and hard things, but to bring you through them. For he himself became human and endured the deepest uh, fear that any human could face, the fear of, ab of abandonment. On the cross, taking the, the sin of the world onto himself so that you might know that God is with you always. Amen. Let's stand as we're able and sing of this good news.
want to invite you to confess the, our faith with slightly different language to reflect what this is really about. This is not an intellectual assent to a set of ideas. When we confess the Apostles' Creed, this is the confession of a relationship with the living God. So in the place of the word believe, I invite you to say the word trust as we say together the words of the Apostles' Creed. I trust in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I trust in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I trust in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love and faith have triumphed over fear. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Your church cries out, O oh God, and listen. You drew near your disciples, draw to us near day. Breathe on us your Holy Spirit that your faith is renewed and we witness to your love, God of grace. Hear our prayer. Your creation cries out, O God, and you listen. Nurture trees, crops, wildflowers, and all growing things. Guide farmers, gardeners, arborists, and others who tend the soil and nurture life, God of grace. Your world cries out, O oh God, and you listen. Guide police, firefighters, paramedics, and other first responders to work for the help, well-being of communities that no one may need to live in fear. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Your children cry out, O oh God, and you listen. Hear those who cry out in suffering or pain, including Dolores, Phil, Kaylee, Jim, Lenny, Karen, Elaine, Ellie, Mary Ann, Adam, Laura, Monroe, Kurt, Lori, Amber, John, Jolene, and Russ. God of grace. Your congregations cry out, O oh God, and you listen. Renew pastors, musicians, church staff, administrators, and volunteers who facilitated Holy Week and Easter worship. Open your hearts to discern where God calls each of us to serve, God of grace. Hear our prayer. Accept our gratitude, O God, for the lives of those who now rest in you, and grant peace to families of loved ones who have passed, including the families of Gary Snook, Jim Hostchild, Ken Bookall, and Dale Anderson, God of grace. Into your hands, most merciful God, we command all for whom we pray, trusting in you and in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share that peace with one another.
few announcements before we continue in worship. Uh, we have a Worship Music Madness Bracket Challenge winner. Uh, we had Death Was Arrested go up against Amazing Grace. Let me get a drum roll. And your winner for the Worship Music Madness Bracket Challenge 2024 is Death Was Arrested. I didn't rig it, I promise. But uh, we had 39 votes for Death Was Arrested and 21 for Amazing Grace. So a solid 60 of you were participating. It's about the numbers that we had throughout uh, the, the week. So thank you very much for your participation in that. Uh, it's been fun to engage in worship in that way. Hopefully we'll do it again next year. And uh, make sure you, you cheer on the Iowa Hawkeyes this afternoon. Uh, and Caitlin Clark and them. Uh, Seth has a, an announcement. Did you want to share about the youth lock-in? Uh, so we got a youth lock-in coming up, and you want to go to the pulpit so we can get. Okay. Um, we'll talk a little. Seth will talk a little bit about about the youth lock-in coming up. Yes. Good morning. So um, the youth lock-in um, a couple week, well a week from this upcoming Friday on the nineteenth, uh, we ask that everyone try and be registered. Uh, by this upcoming Friday, the 12th, but it's for all current 6th through 8th graders, also known as our confirmation students. And um, what we're looking to do is, uh, provided the weather shapes up, which it's looking to do, spend as much time as humanly possible outdoors, doing a variety of activities, such as maybe heading on down to the park for some uh, kickball, um, barring any burning bands, we'll have a bonfire, uh, we'll have a meal together, some other fun fellowship time, um, and we're looking at about... 4 o'clock in the afternoon till 10 o'clock in the evening. Um, that's partially because adults want their sleep. And furthermore, there's um, several school activities uh, coming up the following day. So it'll provide us enough time um, to have a lot of fun. Um, I think Wendy has noted there's a, a decent amount of folks registered thus far. Um, those looking for that link, um, it is available um, on the red, in the narthex there right as you walk in there's a qr code otherwise if you're looking for the link it can be found on the website as well i believe so um like i say we've had a good amount to register so far talk to your friends get the word around it will be a good time for sure thank you thank you seth uh our sermon series living the resurrection looking at stories of encounter with the resurrected jesus will be the following seven weeks uh the men's group at 6 a.m on bagels and brew on mondays will be a uh, going deeper into the text that we talk about on Sundays, so uh, that starts again tomorrow, so you're invited to come bright and early. Uh, the coffee is hot, uh, and so we're grateful for Todd for opening up Bagels and Brew a little early for us to do that. Uh, the ladies meet at 7 p.m. on Mondays. They're going to be doing a series called What the Women Saw, so join them if you'd like that. And then adults are going to be doing uh, a video series on the, the text for the preaching series as well. 9.30 a.m. between Sunday, uh, services on Sundays. They're going to start next week. So, uh, yeah, if you're interested in going a little bit deeper, those are some opportunities for you. If you have ideas for more small groups, let me know, and we can, we can start another one. With that, I'll invite our fourth grade, fourth grade families up to receive their milestones. <clears throat> Our fourth graders over the past month read the Gospel of Mark, uh, and we had them, their assignment was to uh, find at least one piece of good news in every ch uh, chapter of the Gospel, and so they did a remarkable job, uh, and we even had, they, they read it so well that their, their front row, sit, some of them are sitting in the front row now at church, so <laughs> super, super into it, so good job. Let's give our fourth graders a round of applause. Okay, thank you. Uh, one final announcement before we continue in worship with the offering. Gary Snook, uh, who was the drummer for the past year here at St. Stephen, helped with sound a little bit. You may have known him. Passed away in January, and there's now going to be a memorial service uh, for him that they're, they're hosting at Living Word on Tuesday at 10.30 a.m. with visitation 9.30 to 10.30 uh, there'll be a group of us at St. Stephen, Wendy, Seth, and I, and any, anybody else will carpool if you'd like to go over there together at 10 a.m. on Tuesday uh, just to support Gary's family and, um, yeah, remember his life and honor his life. So I do encourage you to, to 
show up at 1030 at Living Word on Tuesday for that memorial service. Any other announcements for the good of the congregation? Okay, we'll continue in worship with the offering. The cross Let us pray. Risen one, you call us to trust you and bear fruit for your kingdom. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love with us. Form us to be your witnesses in the world through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. And after giving thanks, he broke it and gave it for all to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us always to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I invite our communion servers forward at this time. The table is set. All are welcome.
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Um, the God of the resurrection power, Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope bless you now and always. Amen. You can stand as you're able as we sing the sending song. Go in peace, serve the Lord.